Hello everyone, Supreme Decisions here on this lovely, bright, not yet hot morning. But I wanted to come to you today and I wanted to speak about something that I was surprised at the amount of people that have been calling me and contacting me in regards to a power of attorney. Yeah, because most of us have no idea exactly what it is or what they're for. So today, I'm going to show you and help explain to you what a power of attorney is, how can you use it, and what are some of the processes that you'll go through in order to enact it. So, roll the intro. All right, welcome back. First thing, what is a power of attorney? A power of attorney is an agreement between two parties, a principal and an attorney in fact. The attorney in fact need not be an attorney at law or a lawyer. Understand words have power. The power of attorney gives the attorney in fact rights to act in the principal's place. Well, that says a lot to not really give you any real explanation. They are generally reserved for those unable to act responsibly on their own, such as children or the elderly, someone that has a mental defect or illness, or has some means become incapacitated. Because what is an attorney in fact? Basically, it's real simple. It's an agent authorized to act on behalf of another person, but not necessarily to practice law. Basically, the fiduciary. Now, when we go into fiduciary, you often hear me speak about this in the context of police. So this is also something I'll also refer back to in later videos, and I'm not going to go too deep into the details of it. But a fiduciary is a person that has a duty that must act in a way that will benefit someone else. Generally, that's financially. But understand the context of a fiduciary. I'm going to read it one more time. It's the person with the duty that must act in a way that will benefit someone else. This is something whenever I'm talking about it, or I say police have a fiduciary duty, this is one of those contextual things. Now, here's where we get into the interesting part. What are types of powers of attorney? You have a general power of attorney, which is a formal power of attorney that allows the agent to take any legal action the principal may take. The example, an agent can open or close a bank account in the principal's name. The agent can invoke or waive principal's contractual rights. The agent can buy or sell stock for the principal. These are things that you're generally going to see when you are either dealing with those that are affluent and they've set up some sort of type of trust or the elderly or you're looking at someone that speaks on the behalf of behest of someone else in a company type setting. Now you have limited power of attorneys and it offers the agent can only act and make decisions on specified activities and only to the extent of the principal's authorization. This can be granted to the principal to any adult over the age of 18 of age and is usually executed via two witnesses and a notary. Now, with the limited power of attorney, you have specific actions that can be taken for specific situations. Now, there are a lot of things that can go on with that. 
I'll get deeper into that because these are things that I believe most of us either would like to know or have very little context of what it is that they're looking at when they're operating these senses. But lastly is a special power of attorney. Basically, this refers to a person delegating sp specified powers to an attorney to act on their behalf. It limits the area of decision making or specific decision possibilities. Example, a medical proxy or a real estate agent in selling a specific property. A contract signed with spe specified detail of the exact powers given with specific circumstances. It sounds like the limited, but in fact, this one is like, if I'm incapacitated and I'm in the hospital, this person has to act if I am unable to speak, if I am unable to move, if I am hooked to a respirator. These are things that are done for very specific situations and in the case that someone else is not able to make that decision. So these are the three powers of attorney. Like I said, I'll go deeper into them because you have your general power of attorney, your limited power of attorney, and special power of attorney. These are things that we can also explore. And hopefully today you got a better understanding than you did when you started this video. Don't forget, hit the thanks if you actually found some value in this video. Join the channel. Also, don't forget to support the podcast. And Supreme, I'm out.